and we're joined by Stephen Fuhrer, the liberal incumbent candidate in Kelowna Lake Country. Thanks for coming in. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. So, you're knocking on a lot of doors. I am. Someone answers the door. What's the first thing you say? It depends on the door. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's lots of positivity and certainly a ton of recognition for the work that myself and my team were able to do over the four years that I was the member of parliament uh, here in Kelowna. So I, I, that's, you know, I'm appreciative of that. Um, many, many people are happy. Uh, happy people still would like some changes, but they're happy with the direction. Um, the odd door that I hit that maybe isn't that happy uh, still is uh, nice enough to recognize the contributions that I was able to make, which I appreciate. And if they engage with me in a conversation, um, Usually they'll tell me why, I always ask, and most of the time they'll cite something that's not even true, <laughs> which is difficult for me. And then I'll stay on that doorstep as long as they'll talk about it. And, and sometimes I walk away, they go, you give me a lot to think about, and I, you know, we wish each other a good day and off I go. Right. Sometimes it just isn't going to change anything, but they still say thank you and, and off I go. Judging from the kind of comments you see under any story that we post about politics, Boy, people are nasty. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the people at the door or anything like that, that you're getting doors slammed in your face, but you don't see I that. I don't see that. I think, I think it's not just your stuff. It's, it's, if you look, it's, you know, it's the same couple dozen people with five different aliases that just have nothing positive to say about anything. So yeah. um, I don't find that on the doorstep at all. In fact, okay. I find very little, if any, negativity. Every, most people are, are polite if they're just not interested. Even if they're a conservative mind. voter, you're not going to change their mind. They're, they're not yeah. impolite to you. Yeah, they're not impolite. No. So what are the, the key issues that you bring up to get this onto the subject of, of issues and policy? What's at the top of your list? Well, affordability is certainly up there. Um, people want action on climate change. That's been pretty uh, evident. Um, and housing, I say those, and it kind of rolls into affordability. But those three things are the things I hear about the most. And we've seen um, your leader, uh, Justin Trudeau. Uh, well, we've seen the other leaders. Well, they're all dropping a few, uh, you know, bonus affordability items. Like uh, for the Liberals, um, we have additional funding for before and after school care. Yeah, there's there's lots of things. I think if you were to couch it, we have we have little time and lots of things to cover, but. The best way for me to put it is, is that the government, or the previous government, the Liberal Party, has really doubled down on things it saw bear good success in the 42nd Parliament. So basically helping middle class families, helping families, you know, being more aggressive on, on action on climate because people want that. And it's important and they've demonstrated, especially recently, that that's important and they want it. So, you know, fiscal policies that help more people, environmental policies that are better for our planet and our climate. and and if there's something we've done in the past that's worked well, we're, we're trying to make that better. Right. We saw that 16-year-old Greta Thunberg talking about the performance of, you know, well, all the mainstream parties and, you know, she'll give a thumbs down to all of them. You know, um, what do you say to people who want, you know, serious action on climate change, big changes? Well, I mean, I've said this a, a number of times on different media platforms when I've been asked the same question. Yeah, we want action on climate change, but we live in a democracy and not everybody feels the same way about it. And I would concede that the biggest um, kind of detriment to or to progress on this issue is uh, people that are afraid that it's going to cost them too much. And, they, and they're being, it's not, it's been structured in a way that it won't. Um, but, you know, the opposition or the conservatives keep, you know, hammering away at people that either it's not important or they can't afford it, which right. slows the entire process down. Welcome to democracy. Okay, speaking of um, investment and, and money items, there you, you, uh, your, your website indicates that uh, you're pretty proud of some of the investment you've made in this community. Maybe go through your list. Well, some of the big ones, there's a, I have a huge Excel spreadsheet I've been keeping in my office for the last four years, but I mean, the University of British Columbia, which is a social, economic, and academic driver in our community, has received $63 million in infrastructure and research grants, um, which is a big, big deal. Flood protection, Mill Creek and Mission Creek, summer 2017-18 flooded and it could happen again. Yeah. We've got some good money for that. Uh, potable water in Southeast Kelowna. Um, we've been talking about that for 15 years in this community. Finally got it done. Right. Um, rails to trails, the money wasn't huge, a couple million bucks, but you know that's a popular project for this community and it'll be an economic driver for the region. So um, arts and culture got good support, small business got good support. I mean, there's, there's good investment here. Right, and some of the issues we're, we're hearing um, uh, with uh, uh, the Liberals in Ottawa, things like gun control, does that 
Does that do well here in this part well, of the country? Well, we're urban rural, right? So, yeah, so I'm thinking you might get some pushback on well, that. Well, and that's fine. I mean, this, when, regardless of what was on the policy platform, all that has to go through consultations and then has to go through an administrative process to turn into a bill into a law. So, you know, if people are unhappy with the way that's been proposed out of the gate, then they need to come to, should I be reelected or then whoever the next MP is, go to that person and engage with them to make sure that their voices are heard. That's the job of the MP. Um, it seems that voters, and I've seen a few articles written, suggesting that they are more likely to figure out who they don't like before who they do like. And politicians aren't that popular right now. Do you find that? Well, yeah, I think the country is really involved in a conversation <laughs> and right now about who they like the least. I mean, you can see it out there, right? So I think if hopefully that changes because if that's the conversation everyone's going to want to have, I think we might not end up in the best place. The reality is people vote for either the local representative, uh, the party, or the, or the leader, the person that's going to be the PM. That's kind of how pe most people think about it. But what they're actually voting for is policy. That's what right. drives everything. So, and, and parties and, and people put out policy. So if the policies that have been in place for the last four years have brought us to a better place, regardless of who the people were that were in charge of it, that's something that you should be paying attention to right. when you're evaluating it. And I would argue that, is it perfect? No. Is it better? It's much better. And, and you know, pick a category. We're in a better place, headed in a better direction under the policies of, this pre of the government from the 42nd Parliament. In 2015, you were a big underdog, but you won. And I think people are saying, yeah, underdog again. So I guess, are you comfortable with that? Yeah. And well, I guess uh, I'll always be the underdog. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, people were so desperate to get away from what was going on in 2015 under the previous government, uh, under the Harper government, that they bet on me with, I, I, I'd only lived in this community at that time for six years. I didn't, I maybe knew 40 people in this town. Um, I had no track record in politics whatsoever. And, and they still voted for me, which I appreciate. So I was given an opportunity. So my big challenge was, what am I gonna turn that opportunity into? And I think, I've done, I think I've done a pretty good job. I mean, like I said, everyone that I've talked to recognizes that we've had some of the best federal visibility and some of the best investments the community's ever seen. So you think that it's not a, as much of a risk this time. I've demonstrated that I can deliver and, and I'd like to do that again. Thanks for coming in and talking to us about it. Thank you. And thank you for watching Kelowna Now.